Okay. So as as I was saying before, the template is very similar to the to the other one. So uh, at the beginning we we import every class uh, regarding the controller. Then we import some useful some useful uh, um, uh, libraries that will allow us will allow us to uh, to play with uh, uh, packet header and uh, and the different kind of packets. Let's let's say Ethernet packets and uh, IPv4, R, R packet, uh, and even uh, something from the uh, transport protocol, uh, this uh, TCP, UDP. So these methods, these libraries will allow us to recognize these packets and then uh, make actions based on, 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 on that. So at the beginning here, I just uh, declare the number of ports, the, the number of switch ports. Oh. I just forgot to bring the, the sheet. Um, okay. Why I define the number of switch port three? Because this switch uh, has four ports. Okay, one port is dedicated for the control plane, so we don't consider it. We consider the other three ports that are these ones starting from the left, one, two, and three. Then I um, I have defined the address of the controller, the IP address of the controller is 10, 10, 5, 24. That is the interface. The IP of the interface of the PC that the, the last the one of the last time you went to the to the to the lab you have seen that uh, it it, it allows us to to emulate Rio to install Rio and then work with it. The address is ten ten five twenty four and then I just um, define the the subnet that is a slash twenty four. Okay, why I define the the this subnet, because since we um, generate packets with Raspberry Pis, Raspberry Pis, they have even another interface that is the VLAN interface, the Wi-Fi, um, that, that belongs to another subnet. And since I didn't define a gateway, um, I, I, uh, since I define a unique gateway that is the controller, we can see even packets that, that comes from the Wi-Fi interface. So we want to drop that kind of packets. Um, so I define all these details. In this way, we can, we can drop the, the packets we don't need. Then here, um, I define a, a function that, that just translates from IP to, to binary. This is a very simple function, I guess. Uh, uh, that I import with uh, uh, with IP IP address here, and then the class Zodiac switch that is different from the one that I showed you last, last time. Start uh, the OpenFlow protocol is the one three, it is the same, and here I uh, I define a, um, a bunch of initial parameters uh, that are, for example. Uh, the, the, topo the topology API app that is uh, an application that, that allow us to, uh, to look at the topology, to have uh, um, a graphical view of the topology. Then I define the, uh, some, some variables, let's say the nodes, the links, because the controller doesn't know the beginning the topology of the network. So, uh, so at the beginning we need to discover it, okay? So I want to save, uh, um, a list of nodes and links, and the number of nodes and the number of links. Then here, something different from the last template is this: the uh, MAC address of the uh, of the controller. Then I will explain why why I define here the MAC address. Then there is the uh, the function that explain actually the, the, the actually discover the switch and will handle the um, the initial configuration 
So when a switch comes to network, it starts to uh, the end shake with the controller. And here there are all the methods that, uh, that perform this job. And at the end, there is the add flow of the basic uh, uh, action that is uh, send everything to the controller, okay? Then there is the function of the add flow. The add flow will uh, um, add the flows to the open flow switches. You can uh, play with this function. Whenever you need to add a flow or recognize a flow, you can use this function to define, uh, and in, to use this function, you need to define the data path, the priority, the match, that is when this uh, flow is matched, when there is a rule that is verified. Then the actions, and the buffer ID actually can be none. So don't use this parameter. The, uh, in this case, we don't use it. And then there is the function of the send ARP. This is a very simple function. It's very similar to the, um, uh, to the previous, because he, in this case, we define two uh, different opcode. The first one, if it is an ARP request, and the other one if it is an ARP reply. So depending on, on in, which, in which point, which line of the algorithm we are, we need to send an ARP request or an ARP, an ARP reply. I, at this point I need, to tell you, I need to tell you something. Here the uh, ARP protocol is handled by the controller. Okay, it's not something that, uh, that the host uh, the, the, that is managed by the host, because we want to avoid the loops and we want to avoid the, bro the broadcasting of the packets, okay? So at a certain point, I will explain you briefly through the code how, the, how we manage to, to, to give the MAC address of the destinations of the various destinations to the host, to the end host. And then there is the main function that is called by the uh, the decorator uh, packet in that will, that will rise when uh, a, a packet is received by the network to the controller, okay? We are okay at this point. You are following me. This is, are, these are the same thing I explained the last time, so it should be clear. Okay. So when a when we receive a packet, whatever type of packet, could be ARP, could be an IP packet, the, the, these few lines are, uh, are, are, um, are run. So, at the, first, the, the first instance is we control the length of the packet. So we see if there, is some, uh, if there is some error with the length of the packet, we just drop it and we truncate the packet because we don't accept the packet truncated. Then we, we took from the, from the packet, we, we took the information of the data path, that is the switch where this packet is coming. We take the open flow protocol, the type of protocol, because it could be that a switch is, uh, is, is talking with uh, uh, open flow 1.3, but could be even another switch, maybe an old one that is talking with open flow 1.0. So we need to know from the uh, message, from the event, thank you. We need to know from the event which kind of, uh, uh, which kind of protocol uh, uh, we are using. No? And then we want to know from which port uh, of the switch is coming the packet. I've, I've prepared a, an animation here that then uh, at the end of the explanation we show. Then we get the, the actual packet. So these informations are, are all uh, header information that does not belong to the, that they, they don't belong to the packet. Then we took the packet and we take the uh, Ethernet information. So we, we, we actually uh, take the Ethernet header and from there we, we take the source and the destination, okay? So uh, reaching this point, we know three different, uh, very important information. We know the, uh, the Ethernet, uh, ma the, MAC, the, the MAC address of the destination, the MAC address of the source, and then the, uh, the DPID, the data path ID of the source. 
Okay? What we need to forward the packet are uh, the DPID of the destination and then all the path that we need to, uh, we need to traverse. From here, we handle the topology discovery. So until this point, we reach a packet and we get all this information. Now, we need to see, we need to have a clear look at the topology. Based on the, uh, on the assumption that the topology can change, okay, because we want to play with this switch, because they are real switch, so we want to, for example, uh, unplug one cable or uh, add another switch. So we want a code that is uh, an, a, a control, an application. Actually, we want an application that is dynamic. And, and can be uh, reconfigured very easily. The topology discovery will always update uh, a list, uh, a, a series of a series of lists. For example, the switch list that actually is a list of switch that is present in the, in the network. That we use the function get switch to take the uh, the list of uh, the uh, of the switches that are uh, present in the network that are online in the network. Then we make a follow of this switch. Actually, we get the DPID of this switch. Do you know this, uh, this form of, of for loop here? It's a, actually a normal for loop, but it's in one line. This, uh, this has a gr great advantage in the performance of the algorithm because it performs a single access to the, to the memory instead of doing it iteratively. With a single line, we say that for each switch in the switch list, we want to, uh, we want to fill the switch DPID. Okay, and we create a list of uh, the DPID, data path ID. Then you see here the self logger. When, I, when we build this, this algorithm, um, many times I wanted to know where I was doing some mistake. So uh, my way to debug the code is to, <coughs> to print, to print things. Okay, for example, here, I'm here. <laughs> Maybe I should delete this. But okay, for each, uh, uh, for each switch here, so, so then here I perform another, another four, two four, where I say for each switch and for each uh, switch port in the a range of one switch port plus one because this is not co uh, included so it goes from from one to three that is the number of ports for each switch I want to know which port is occupied and which is not why I want to know this information this is important because if I want to avoid loops in, in the network uh, for, uh, for example in the harp in the, the ARP uh, protocol, when, I, when, when we, we want to know the uh, MAC uh, uh, of the destination. As you know, there will be an ARP uh, request in broadcast to the network, but we want to avoid the broadcast, okay? So if I know for each switch which are the port occupied by a cable, I can know if this cable is, uh, I can know two things. If the cable is a cable that is connecting to another switch, okay, and if it is a cable that is connecting something else, that in our case is, is an host. So if I uh, store this information from the control, I can send uh, an ARP request, not in broadcast, but um, specific to that switch and to that port. In this way, I can, uh, I can directly talk with the host. Okay, and they can reply to that port directly to the controller. Is it clear, this, this procedure? Because this is not the normal ARP. This is not the ARP that you study in the basic networking. This is something, this is an ARP that we do uh, in SDN, in, in, actually in this configuration in the lab. Okay, clear? So once I fill this, um, this list, the, the, this variable, that is a list, with the, with the switch port that are occupied, you see here there is the ID of the switch and then the switch port. I put it as zero, okay? 
Then I take the, uh, I, I add the nodes. Okay, this is uh, uh, as, the, uh, as the previous code. And then I get the links of, of, every, uh, of every switch. So the links of the network. Now we go to the Mac learning. Now we want to know the Mac, uh, the, 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 the Mac of the devices, okay, of the switch. We want to associate for each Mac a port, and actually we want to do even the, uh, even the opposite. And then we, uh, at the beginning, I just define the uh, like the, the, the empty list. This is needed because if, you wa if I want to, if I want to add, if I want to add something in a list, I need at the beginning, I need to define an empty list. After that, I fill this list with one with the information marked port. This means that for each DPID uh, switch, I want its source. I, uh, for each DPID source, I take two information. I take the DP, DPID, the data path ID, the actually uh, the source that is uh, here, the MAC address of the source, and then I take the port, the port where it is attached, it is connected. The same thing I do in, in, in the opposite way. I, I suggest you to play with this list because if you know if you know all this information, you can uh, actually perform uh, and write algorithms that mm, that, that are based on all, all this information. Because here, actually, I'm just repeating the same thing, but in a uh, the same thing in a different way. I just take I'm just making a list of uh, the source the, the data path ID or, or of just the source. The, uh, the, in the port where I receive the packet and then the, uh, the, the address, the MAC address of the source, by which it is the address of the host that is sending the packet. Once I, I learn the MAC, the MAC address of the source, uh, IP, of the source uh, host, now I need to handle the hard packet because we know that at the beginning the IP table of the host is empty. So we will try to know this information from the gateway. Okay, since uh, it, it doesn't have uh, the, uh, the, 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 MAC, uh, the MAC address of the destination, we will try to ask to the gateway, look, I need this, uh, this address to perform, my, uh, to perform my algorithm, to perform my sending. But, but the gateway in this case, I com we configure the gateway as the controller. So everything will be received by the controller. Now with this piece of code, we handle the ARP. It is a bit long, but actually perform what I, what I did, what I said before. If it is an ARP, uh, if it is an ARP request, it will actually will be sent to the controller here. It will be sent to the controller, and then, actually, if the ARP destination IP is in the IP to MAC, this means that if we just if we know the the match of IP and MAC address, we just send the ARP uh, ARP request to the destination because we know where is it. Otherwise, we need to discover it. Okay, so. For each switch here, the controller we send a uh, we send a uh, an app request, okay? But we send an app request just on that port that match this condition, that port that are occupied by a connection, okay? But but which connection? The connection that the, uh, that belong to the host. Not to, the, not to the connection that belongs to another switch, because otherwise we are creating a loop. Because in the end, it's always a broadcast packet. So it will be broadcasted, okay? Otherwise, if it is an ARP reply, we'll just receive the ARP reply, we'll store the information. So here we are taking the information of the MAC. We are filling the table. 
and then uh, and then we are ready to send uh, to send the, the app reply to the uh, source to the source host so there will be like a man in the middle the controller whenever an host needs to know uh, the destination mac of any destination host it will he will know this information from the controller Okay, so it will perform an app request to the controller. The controller will take this, uh, this app request and will, will, uh, will forward this packet directly to the switch that have that port occupied. Then the reply will come from one host, not from everyone. Okay, the, the, this app reply will be received by the controller and then the controller will send this app reply to the host. Is, clear, is it clear this... Uh, 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 the, this game here. <laughs> okay. Once the host knows the uh, R, the, the, the MAC addresses, then it can send, it can, it can, send, can send the IP packets. So then we receive the IP packets. So this uh, um, uh, this line here will will match, and then here we we have an IP packet. Be careful that whenever you receive an R packet, this piece of code will never be run. Okay, but the, because the R packet is different from, from the IPv4 packet. You see here at the beginning of the handle R uh, packets, I just, have, I just do a, a match. If the other type is the uh, R type, then you uh, run this code. Otherwise, nothing. There is not an else. If the IPv4 packet, so there is an IPv4 field in the packet, so then we, uh, we run this code. Okay? In this way, we, can, we are able to separate the harp from the IPv4 packets. Any questions until here? Please stop me if you have questions. Okay, we are, we have two hours, so we have a, a long, lot of time. Okay. Now, if it is an IP packet, as uh, the, as we did for the uh, MAC addresses, we 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 take the source and the destination IP <coughs> information. So now the host is sending an IP packet to the controller. No? Because he wants to know where to forward this packet because the, the, the open flow table is empty. There is just one rule, the basic rule, that says send everything to the controller. The controller now will take the source IP, the destination IP, the source MAC, the destination MAC. He will take the, uh, actually, the net uh, the, the the net pack the net uh, the network information if it is a uh, um, we are we are matching this uh, this information here we want to know if it is a slash 24 because if it is not a slash 24 it does belong to this network and we can drop it uh, no Okay, so we, we do this, this match. If it is a packet that belongs to our network, we take even the information of the source port and destination port. Okay, if it is a, a port number six, this means that it is a TCP port, otherwise 17 is a UDP port. So we actually, uh, we, we can even um, uh, separate this kind of, uh, learn this kind of information. That, that actually this information from the guys that will do the project of uh, uh, packet classification, if you look up, they can use packet classification, they can use this information to actually perform some kind of uh, policy rules uh, and in order to perform the algorithm. Now here, as you can see, with the, with the method selflogger.info, you can print to the screen in the terminal, you can print whatever you want. You can, print, you can print, for example, in this case, we print packeting uh, uh, packet from the uh, switch 
DPID source with the source IP, source IP, with the destination IP here, and from the port import. Actually, we know everything that is happening in, when a packet is received by the controller. So based on this information, we can perform whatever algorithm we want. So we, we, we can even say, okay, we just, we know the destination, of, the destination IP, we actually know even where, uh, where is this uh, IP. Because when we handle, when we do the Mac learning, we, we even know where is the, um, where, is the uh, where is the destination host, okay? Once I print this in, in the screen, I, I say, okay, get, get data path. We take the uh, data path of the, of the destination of the destination Mac. So the, this means that we take the uh, identifier of the switch where the destination host is connected. Because to perform the routing, we need to know where is the switch, the end switch. Then we, we, get, we get the ID of the destination and we, print, and, we, and we print this information. Look, the destination uh, is present on the switch DPID destination. Okay? Once we know the destination uh, uh, ID of the switch, we compute the shortest path. Here, the uh, routing policy is the shortest path. Okay. Uh, it's not uh, a function that you need to write from scratch. You can take from the very nice library that is called NX, Network X. It's a Python library that performs this kind of uh, uh, graph uh, functions, graph methods. For example, the shortest path. To the shortest path, you need to give the information of the network, so the graph. You need to give the source and the destination. So you give the list of the uh, uh, nodes and links that is filled to the topology discovery in the previous part of, of, of the template. Then you give the source and the destination and they will compute the path. The path is a series of DPID switch. And we can print even the shortest path. We can know which switch we are crossing. Okay? Since uh, every, uh, every, every method here will retur return a string, so in order to print it, you need to use uh, the percent %s. Now here we do some... Uh, mm, some comparison. For example, if the length path is equal to one, what does it mean? If the, uh, host, the destination host is in, 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 on the same switch where there is the source host, no? If the path is one, there is one switch to cross. Okay, if it is there, it's very simple, no? We take the import, from, from, so we take the port where the, the packet is coming. We take the output port from the actual, from the uh, list that we have done at the beginning. Then we take the, uh, we, we write the actions. So we say the output, the output port will be, uh, <coughs> will be the output. The action two is the, the output port will be the import because here we are, we are going to uh, install the, the two flows. Okay, the flows from source, uh, from source to destination, the flow from destination to source. Okay, because when we ping, when we perform a ping, there will be always the reply. <coughs> Once we know the, the two actions, the import, the output port, and the match, the match, what are the match? For example, if we receive a packet from import this import, and with this Ethernet destination, destination, the other match is the opposite one, then we add this flow, we add the flow, data path is the data path actually of the switch. We increase the uh, priority, the match, we, with the match that it needs to see is the match one, and the action is the action one. And we do the same with the other, uh, 
with the other flow. Okay. Clear? It's clear because of was Okay. Yes, tell me. It, a series of DPID numbers. Every switch, uh, to, uh, we associate a number to every switch, okay? But in this case, it, 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 uh, it will take a path of, oops. Path, in this case, is a number, is one. Why I take the length? The length, I take the length because if, uh, um, if the source host and the destination host are on the same switch, I just need to add uh, two flows there that are straight forward. But if the length of path, so the series of numbers, the series of ID of the switch are more than one, it becomes two, three or four, I need to install two flows, okay, on every switch. One, one to uh, send the packet from the source to the destination, and the other one to come back. This is a way to do, uh, to install every flow in the scene. Now, we, in, the, in the other piece of code, I show you actually the, uh, the, this behavior. If the path is, if the uh, path is greater or equal to two, this means that we need to cross at least two switch, I can iterate this procedure. Because if it is just for one, since it is straightforward, I cannot generalize the, the code. No? Okay. Uh, if it is greater or equal than two, I, I take the data path of the source that is, uh, that is at path zero. Okay, then I take the data path of the destination that is at path length path minus one. That is the end, uh, the, the end uh, switch, okay, on the other, on the other uh, part of the network. Now that I know the data path uh, of the source, the data path of the destination, I take the two ID, then I take the import from the source and the import from the destination, the same from the output port. Why I take this information? Actually, this information, this information, they go together because I want to know. I want to install the flows from the, from the import to the output for, of every switch, okay? At this moment, I'm taking just the, the information of the two hand switch the source and the destination. Then I perform the action. The action that we, we the, the action that will go to the source, the action one. The action two that will go uh, to the, the uh, to, to the same source, and then the action uh, one from the destination, the action two from the destination. Why the why we have four actions? Because we need to install uh, four flows in two switch. Two flow in one switch and two flows in another switch. These two flows are uh, com uh, complemented. One says uh, from host A to host B. And the other one says the opposite, from host B to host A. But this information needs to be installed uh, in the switch. That is different from the things that we are doing in the other template. Because in the other template, we don't install the flows at the endpoints. Because in that case, the, the goal was, uh, is to uh, perform some uh, uh, performance evaluation at the, end, at, at the end point. So there, we, uh, we don't install any flows, but I say just every packet you receive, just send to the control. In this way, I can perform the lookup, the packet classification, etc. But in this case, I want to install every flow in every path. In this way, the packet to, uh, to the controller will arrive just one time. For the other times that we perform the ping, the, the whatever, 
we don't need to, to, to go to the controller if the flow is there. Otherwise, we, we do uh, everything, to the, uh, everything from, uh, from the beginning. Okay. Actually, here, okay, if the length faf is greater or equal than two, I'm taking, uh, this is actually the case when the path is equal to two. So we have uh, uh, two switch to cross. So host, switch, switch, host. And at the end, when I define the action and the match, I just send the flow here. Okay? Uh, no, sorry. At, at each here, I send a flow here and a flow here. If the path is greater than two, this means now, now we have a longest, longest uh, trail here, I can iterate with a for loop. Because actually, the, uh, I, ca I, can, uh, I can change the import information with a variable that is, that is here, the, the, the variable that is contained in the path, because path in the end, what returns? Re return the ID of the switch. With that information, we can get the import and the output port. With this simple piece of code, I can iterate over the, um, the, 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 the method of add flow. Be careful that I could even, uh, I, could, I, I, I can even do these things in one piece of code, even for the other cases, okay? But since I want, I want to, uh, to play with these methods, I just made the three cases. If the path is equal to one, if the path is equal to two, in this way you can see that you have to define the action, the match, the data, the data, the data path idea, and, and at the end, you define the add flow. Okay, but actually here there is an example where you can iterate this, uh, um, this procedure with the for loop. In the end, these outport, outport actions uh, and uh, out and data path send message, this data path send message, what is actually in the, in the details? This is the packet that the controller received because the packet in this case is not receiving just the header, it's receiving the wall packet. But this packet is now is in the controller, it needs to be send again to the uh, source because otherwise we'll be lost. So the last four lines just say, okay, now from this packet I know everything. I know I installed every flow, now you are ready, the network is ready to send this packet and the others. Is it clear? Any questions? No? No questions. Okay, no. Um, <clears throat> there, there here actually is the same of the, of, of the other template. I just say again here that we, um, the, this is an, the, the, the event that says that if there is a switch that is coming to the network, then get the topology data. We want to get the topology not only when we have a packet that is coming from the switch that we know are there, but we want to know even if there is a switch, uh, another switch that is coming to the network. I want to update the topology because otherwise I will keep uh, uh, an old topology and then uh, the router will not work. And this, this piece of code actually is, is the same. And you see, even here we are doing the uh, occupied uh, uh, procedure. I want to know what, uh, what are the links that are occupied. And then these the last three lines uh, are just the um, uh, other apps that are in Rio that will allow us just to plot with um, uh, in Google Chrome or in the browser with the, the HTTP protocol we can see um, actually the topology that we are uh, emulating. But in, in, in this case will be the real topology, but this real topology can be seen even from the uh, REST API the, that are performed by these free applications. 
Okay? So I prepared now this slide that actually we will say we will we we'll see we we'll see an example. So let's say that we have three switch and in, in this case, uh, we have uh, the SAR application uh, that, uh, underscore SDN. Okay? The two hosts, host one and host two. The open flow rule is made by match set, action set, and priority set. At the beginning, the, uh, the, the flows are the, the, the basic one that says everything just uh, sent to the controller and this is performed at the beginning of the code if you if you remember when there is the get switch the, uh, the uh, definition then if there is a packet is sent to, to the switch the switch will send to the controller the SAR application will uh, will run the the first uh, the first part of the code that will recognize if it is an R packet of, of uh, or an IP packet Let's say that in this case the R, the R procedure is done. So we have the uh, this is an IP packet. Then it will uh, the controller will uh, install the flows in every switch from one way. It will send to the to the switch and then it, it can uh, it can be forwarded until the destination. Actually, this example is different from the one that I show you in the code because in the code. The code, what we do, we store the flows even from the other, uh, even from the uh, back uh, routing. Okay, we store the flows once, one time. This example is made in, even if we, for example, in, uh, in the, with the second host, we send to the switch, the switch will do the same thing we send to the controller the SAR application will, uh, will work and then we have uh, the other flows that are installed and then the packet will forward until the destination. The only difference that, that there is with this, uh, uh, with this slide is that the, these two flows are installed immediately. Okay? Because I made, at the beginning I made two versions of the code and uh, actually the second one that, that followed this example uh, was too was too long, and uh, it performed uh, uh, a little bit bad, uh, worse than than the first one. So I prefer to install everything in, uh, in once, and this, in this way the code becomes becomes more readable. Okay. This is the example that I wanted to show. Um, please, if there are any questions. Test me because this is we we finished to to explain the template. Just to remember you the um, no. this is part of the source code here, and you can uh, um, you can uh, uh, clone the, this GitLab uh, GitLab project if you want and I, I would like at the end of the class if you give me the uh, IP address of one the IP address <laughs> the email of each pro of each project just one that will be the leader uh, in this way I can add him here because here there are your uh, projects Where is it? Can you say the name of the final group and the topic? Ah, I'll show you. Do you want to show you? Okay. Okay, this is the last... Okay. This is a uh, house from the Google. <coughs> now, how many of these projects are uh, now in the class? 
raise a hand for each project. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So eight. Now we have eight projects here. So who uh, raise your hand for the topic one? Okay, you have the topic one. Topic two, three, four. Okay, five. Ah, five is over. Six, seven, seven is not here. Eight, ah, Stella, eight, you are at the top of eight, okay. Nine, there, and ten. Ten, okay. So now we are missing the seven and ten. <laughs> um. Okay, now we can, I guess we can uh, we can go to the <laughs> to the projects. No? Yeah. Okay, the projects are uh, are ten. The first one is about the multi-bit tree and path compressor tree. Uh, the objective of this project in uh, real application, okay, implement the following IP lookup algorithms that are the binary tree, the multi-bit tree, and the path compressor tree. Assign the IP addresses uh, so to generate a routing table with the prefixes of different length. What does it mean? This means that you need to generate the topology at the beginning, so you need to modify the minute files, the topology, and the config where there you need to define the association of IP and host. Generate a lot of different ne uh, network addresses, okay? Then generate packet traffic using ping or hyperf and hyperf. Let's <coughs> say the, the first commit is to perform the ping. Ping is very easy. Uh, you just, from the host, from me, it, as I sh show you a couple, a couple of times, a lot, the last time is very easy because you need to just write P and uh, this uh, the destination IP. With IPERF is a little bit more. Uh, it's not complicated, but you you need to open uh, a server at the destination that the in, at the source you need to send to the same port uh, of the uh, transport of the transport layer. The documentation of IPERF is very easy. You can go uh, along and see how it works. And measure and compare the average performance parameters of the different algorithms. This is, can be taken from the chapter two of the book that is referenced by the, 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 the class, the course. And the template you need to use in the SAR application. It's not this one that I showed before, uh, today, okay? It's the one that we showed uh, last year. Um, the, if you have any any doubt on about the methods of Rio, actually for this for this project you need you don't need to go through the code like we did today. We, you just need to change one function. Do you remember? You are the you are this project, right? You need you need to change just one function. That is the IP lookup that you can write outside the template or inside. In my opinion, you should write inside. Okay, because it's there, you can see. But you can even do outside and then import. Yeah. Can you use the Python library? Yes. Actually, the mm, Python libraries are inside the framework of, of Rio, so you can. Actually, two functions they have to modify. One is to build the data structure. At the beginning. Yeah, in the code we made this uh, this distinction. Where at the beginning you have the data structure uh, procedure and then the the lookup. The second one 
is uh, similar to the, to the first value, but in this case, you need to build the binary tree and binary search on prefix length. And as the, same, as the same, we need to assign the IP addresses to generate a routing table with prefixes for different length and generate the traffic with the ping and iperf applications. Okay? So, uh, as before, you need to build the data structure and then the function. But the data structure will be done just at the, at the definition of the class, so at the beginning of the class. When you are comparing the performance, the results that uh, you should obtain is expected according to the complexity. So you know that each uh, algorithm has a different complexity. Different complexity. <coughs> and the, the binary tree has always the, the, the benchmark, the biggest one. <coughs> then the third one is the packet classification project. Here you have the, to design a set of packet classification rules based on the source IP, destination IP, and action. Um, in this case, as for the uh, IP lookup, you need to define at the beginning of the algorithm the uh, a data stru structure where you define actually the table, okay, the table of the rules. Let's say 50 rules, 100 rules. This table then will be accessed by your algorithm, that is the uh, linear search and the hierarchical tree. Actually, the linear search is present; it's just there. Uh, you can, you can perform your evaluation with the linear search. And then the hierarchical tree in the versions of basic, set, pruning, pruning and grid of trees. Then you generate traffic uh, with uh, ping and hyperf applications. As the same, uh, you need to measure and compare performance as parameters with the two algorithms. If you, if you want to have, a, um, if you want to have some uh, uh, related reference, there is the chapter three of the book uh, of the course. The template is our application, and if you have any uh, any doubt on the method, etc., you can go to the documentation review. It's very simple. It's Python. Uh, it's uh, very nice, and there are a lot of tutorials if you're looking for a specific function. The geometric algorithm is, belongs to the packet classification uh, family. As the same, you need to define the same way the, uh, the set of rules, so the table, that could be a, ser a series of lists or basically um, um, a data structure. And then, based on that, you, perform, you, you need to perform the, uh, the two versions of the linear search and geometric classification, that, that is the cross product and the bitmap intersection. Then generate the packet traffic using ping and hyperf. Why? Uh, in, in this case, it's better to use uh, uh, hyperf because you can generate uh, different flows based on, on different ports of the, uh, at the TCP UDP level. Okay? So in, the, in, the, in this example, hyperf is preferred respect to ping because with ping, you can make the lookup based on the uh, based on the addresses. Then the, 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 the project five starts with the SDN projects. Is this your project? Okay. Okay, this is uh, uh, to design a multipath network where there are multiple disjoint paths from a source and, the, and a destination. Oh, now the uh, template that you have, you have to modify is the, the, the template that I showed here. Differently, differently from the other template that where they need to write another function, but they don't, don't have to touch the, the, the code. Here you have to touch the code. You have to modify it. I give you the freedom even to delete all the code and make a new one. Okay, this is an example that I did in order to, uh, to give you uh, um, something where to start. Okay? Because... In this project, you need to define multipath networks. This means that the, the, that is a network. In this case, the network should should be a ring. 
okay? Maybe I got it here. Implement a real application to set, uh, to set up a pair of MPLS link disjoint tunnels to connect the source with the destination. Let's say we have a ring. So in, uh, in your home, you, in your computer, you can uh, uh, virtualize with Mininet. We have, we can emulate with Mininet a, a ring. Why a ring? Because at the end, you need to try your algorithm here with this. So don't do too much complicated uh, algorithm uh, things. You need to define the MAPLS uh, uh, tunnels. Okay, there is not the example of MAPLS, of course, because it's your project. How to do MAPLS, you, you go to the documentation here and see how to make uh, an MAPLS rules, an MAPLS tunnels. The only things more here is to create this joint path. What does it mean that uh, the, the two paths does not, uh, they don't, they don't uh, have in common uh, uh, switch and links. They need to be separated in order to have a, a kind of protection. If there is something wrong in a path, there is the other one that is working. If you are following the, uh, how is, uh, what is the class of uh, Professor Tornatore, the communication network design, there, there is the, uh, you, you study the working path and the protection path. No? This, is something, this is something similar. The application must be able to reroute traffic on the backup path in case of a failure of a link on the working path. Measure the effectiveness of the protection mechanism by emulating link failures. With Minet, you emulate the link failure. In the lab, we take a link and we just unplug it. And we see if we have a packet loss uh, and, uh, and if we have the um, reroute on the other uh, on the other link, okay. Since, since the topology is a ring, obviously the only way to make two uh, link disjoint uh, paths is that uh, you go on <coughs> clockwise for one one uh, link uh, one connection and counterclockwise for the other one. <coughs> Is clear the objective here? Okay, by the way, if you, when you develop the project, if you have questions, just write me in. I think about MPLS, it uh, does uh, decay immediately for the last system, so it was not uh, actually covered by the cost. By the, by the, by the cost. <laughs> okay. Then the project about the traffic load balancing. The project in the, the group is here, you're there? Okay. Here you have to design a multipath network equal, the same as before, where there are multiple paths from one switch to another. Implement an algorithm to load balance the traffic based on link parameters or load on a switch. Measure the utilization and end performance of the network. For load balancing algorithms, you can go uh, to read the chapter 14 of, of the book in the reference. Uh, but basic, basically what we have to do is to, uh, to, uh, to, to write an algorithm that uh, try to um, redistribute the load of the links in the network, okay? Since it is a multipath network, you can define multiple uh, paths from source to destination. Uh, in order to try your algorithm, you can, for example, overload a link. You can set up in the Mininet uh, a maximum uh, um, the maximum bandwidth supported by the link, and when you reach a point, when you reach a, a, a threshold, then you can redistribute the flows in another links, other links, okay? You can use, yeah, uh, you can use ping and hyper to generate traffic. It's the same for every project. Maybe here we forgot to write here, uh, but you use hyper. Yeah, it's better to use iperf, and it's better if you use, for example, uh, um, both TCP and, I, and UDP. With iperf, you can generate a lot of flows in, uh, on the same connection. Okay. In uh, chapter 14, is only if you want to have a general frame, framework on uh, uh, the load balancing algorithm, because there are a lot of Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay. Then uh, there is the project of failure detection in ring. Actually, this is a node failure. You have to design a system that can react to node failures in a ring network. It, uh, I think it's not here, this project, right? Or was the one that was missing? Okay. Um, in this case, you need to react to the, to the node failure. This means that you need to design a system that uh, may make the reconfiguration of the network based on the link that is, uh, the, uh, sorry, based on the node, uh, on the node failure. So uh, a way to try your argument is to uh, just sh shut down a node and then you see what, what happens to the flows that were, in the, that were in the network. Because when you try this algorithm, you need to have a way, you need to have some current uh, traffic exchange between host with ping and hyper, okay? A way to, uh, a suggestion to start uh, with this non-failure is to um, send, uh, is to add flows to the network and then uh, uh, try to have a list of the flows that you have added in each node. In this way, when you have to, uh, when you shut, shut down the, the node you can react looking at the table. This could be an, a, a first approach. A second approach could be instead whenever a node uh, falls down, you read the flows that are present on the other uh, on the other nodes. Read if there is a destination that, that belongs to the node that 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 fall, that fall down, and then react changing that flows. Okay. The project, project 8 was here, right? Okay, project 8 is there. Very, very similar to the, to the previous one, but in this case, you need, you need to face the link failure, okay? So actually, we have a link failure. This means that we have the two switch that, that, are, uh, that, that are in, uh, uh, that you have to, uh, to in, the, in the two switch, you have to see what are the flows there that you need to modify. And on the other switch even, or on, the, on the ring. Okay. The same, there are the uh, events that handle the link failure. Uh, the commit of this project is to read the documentation of Rio. So how, to, how do I get a link failure? How do I get the links in the network? So this is one commit. How do I get the node failure? This is the first procedure that you have to implement. At least to have the updated topology where you, have, where you can do the comparison with the old one. So in this case, something different from this code is you don't have to, to um, uh, rewrite the same variable of the topology where there is the topology information, but you have to have always a new one where you can make the comparison. Okay, in this way you can react uh, to the link failure. Project nine is here, is there? Oh, guys, there. Design a multipath network where there are multiple paths from one switch to another, okay? Develop a real app that proactively chooses a different path for each traffic flow. Each traffic flow is identified by the source and destination port uh, at the transport layer, TCP and uh, UDP. Generate traffic with iperf to test the network and check the packets of which flow follow the correct path. Here you have to, um, to imagine if you are, uh, if you are uh, for example, a, co a company uh, that, needs to, that needs to do some kind of policy-based routing of different application that uh, running on different flow or different ports of TCP and UDP. Okay, so the, the, the our first commitment is to set up these rules, policy-based rules, different flows that needs to follow uh, pre-selected um, uh, pre paths. Okay, you need to generate this, uh, this kind of procedure. And then uh, 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 proactively you, you need to uh, Install the flow and choose which flow needs to follow your application. Okay.
Questions? Okay, the last project is uh, very similar to the, to the other one, but in this case is provider-based. Here we, uh, we need to design a multipath network where there are, uh, who is the project 10 here? No, question mark. Design a multipath network where there are uh, multiple paths from one switch to another. Each traffic flow is identified by the uh, type of service feed in the IPv4 packets. There is a way to read even this parameter. Okay. You, you, in this case, we need to, to develop a reapplication such that when a user starts sending IP traffic to the network with a given type of service, the controller, the provider, reactively sets up the path uh, for the uh, type of service value. So in this case, it's not the user that choose proactively the flow, but it's the provider. Okay, so the, the, the user is blind. In, in this case, it's something that, uh, that belongs to the uh, controller, and it needs, to, it needs to define, even in this case, a policy-based rules for, uh, a kind of, for different kinds of applications that are based on uh, suspicious destination port of the transport uh, layer. Uh, in, this in this case, uh, uh, since we, we, need to we need to change the type of service uh, inside the IPv4 packet, we need, to, we need to generate traffic with the SCAPI. That is another tool like ping, like IPERF, where we can even define this parameter. To test the and check the packets on each flow follow the correct path. Okay? For any questions you need, uh, at the beginning, try to handle by yourself. If it is a basic question, like I really don't understand the, uh, the entire piece of code and I'm in trouble, I cannot move on, send me an email and we can face together. Um, otherwise, try to, go, uh, try to be independent at the beginning, so go to the documentation and, uh, and try to take confidence with the code, running it uh, like we did at the beginning of, of the class, um, and do your project. This is the end of the project part. Uh, maybe you can send me now the, uh, your email. Okay. I know we don't. Uh, what, what, what do you want? Mm. Uh, send, send to Sebastian and I just run the uh, email with the uh, group so that uh, we have the mail with Sebastian can forward it. Or send to Sebastian and Um, please, if there are any questions, this is the right time. If uh, you, we can, I can even repeat again something that was not clear. Or uh, if you have, want to have a look to the switch, is here. Okay, okay. <laughs> Sebastian, uh, he is uh, available. You can take an appointment with him. In case uh, he may be abroad, but maybe abroad in the next uh, few months, uh, then uh, we can have uh, you can we can have with him a Skype call. <coughs> but he will come back. <laughs> Hopefully, I will come back. No, but the, the best is uh, to contact him uh, uh, by February. So you can go to him and, and have first uh, meetings in February, so we are sure that uh, he will be here. Nicolò, who is Nicolò? Um, okay, this is all. Uh, I have one question. Oh. Oh. I mean, uh, that minimet allows us to design Yes, Beca because we, 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 we minimet, you can access to the host with, the, with XTER. Okay. okay, this is in the manual. Uh, and since you, you are emulating the host, inside the host, you can run Hyper. Okay, so I don't understand that. I yes. Is it already installed? Yes, it's already installed. Okay. Okay. Be careful when you run hyper that there are a lot of uh, 
you got a lot of uh, parameters that are set by default. But not, this is not necessarily the best uh, setting. So, for instance, one, one important thing when you are running Hyper is that uh, you should not generate packets that are too long. Because if the packets are longer than the MPU, which is the, the maximum uh, payload of the, the frame, or layer two frames that you are using in your network, then uh, there is a fragmentation. And fragmentation sometimes is not uh, implemented in the user. So it's always better to use Hyper with uh, packets that are smaller, so set the, the length of the packets less than one, uh, 1,500 bytes. So that you think 500 bytes is okay. <coughs> Push the yeah. yeah. No. no. But if you use the classical, if you don't touch that parameter, you're okay. No, 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 not sure about it. Not sure about it? Because the, the default. The NPU is, uh, oh, is fixed, is given by the fact that uh, Mininet is emulating a, a, an Ethernet, Ethernet uh, interface. So the NPU is 1,500. I think that uh, the default, I don't, I'm not sure, but the default length in uh, IPERF is uh, something very close to one that can be So in order to avoid any problems, make it uh, smaller. Okay. Make it uh, 500 bytes. If you if you need okay uh, for measuring times. You can import the Python library, this is called it time. And you just you put a flag, uh, the, the two flags, the start and the stop, uh, in the code, since, since every method will, re will return a, a, um, something from the, from the network, say the ad flow or whatever, uh, you can even uh, measure times with this Python uh, library. When you are comparing two different algorithms, what you should do is to run a several, uh, observe what happens for several packets and measure the time that it takes, the average time that it takes in your lookup procedure to process each packet. So this is why you need to calculate times. Yeah, in the, in, uh, in the, in the first four projects there, when you need to the to measure times, you basically you put time start and time stop one before the function, the other one after. If you want to measure uh, the time of the, the first time when when you generate the tree, that is the data structure, or you want to see maybe in the in the details a piece of code that generate the different things, there you can measure even times and making and make. Uh, a performance evaluation even based on the complexity of your algorithm. Guido, posso, posso staccare qui la OBS? No? OBS posso staccare. Uh, one, one question. Is anybody of you who wants to come to the visit to Caldera Data Center? 